The previous video assumed we had a small fixed set of memory frames to work with when placing pages from virtual memory. But of course, the reality is a bit more complicated. One possible scheme is to have a fixed number of frames assigned to each process so that whenever a page fault occurs, one of those frames is replaced by a new one. So in this scheme, we have a fixed number of frames assigned to each process, and whenever we replace one, it must come from that process. Note that each process could have a different number of fixed frames, but over the lifetime of the process, the number of frames does not change. However, it is also possible for one process to possess a different number of frames uh, over the course of its execution. This would be an example of variable allocation. Now, within this scheme, we can have the possibility of local replacement, meaning that although the number of frames allocated to a process changes over its lifetime, when it comes to replace one, we have to pick a frame from the set assigned to that specific process. The alternative is to allow global replacement. In this scheme, any frame can belong to any process, and whenever we want to replace one, we simply look at the entire set of frames in memory and use any one we want to store the new page bring, brought in from virtual memory. It is not possible to have a fixed allocation scheme with global replacement, as this would make no sense. The previous video worked with a fixed set of frames. This is very similar to this local replacement and fixed allocation scheme, where each process has its own small fixed set of frames. But you could also think of the previous video as being used in conjunction with a global replacement policy, where the set of frames is simply the entire set of frames in memory, and whenever a page fault occurs, we can replace a frame associated with any process, and we don't really care which process it came from when picking that frame. The one that is complicated is this variable allocation combined with local replacement. So we'll talk a bit more about this. Variable allocation is more flexible than fixed allocation. In combining a variable allocation with a local scope, although it is more complicated than simply using a global scope, it can give us better performance. The set of frames in memory for a given process are known as its residence set. Because we have variable allocation, the size of the residence set can change. Managing the size of this residence set has to be done deliberately over the course of the execution of the process. Whenever a page fault occurs, because we are using local scope, we will only replace a page that is currently inside the residence set. But how do we decide when to increase or decrease the size of the residence set? One approach that can be used to manage the size of the residence set is known as the working set strategy. In order to understand how this strategy works, we have to first define the concept of a working set. For a given process, the working set of that process at time t for a given window size is the set of pages that the process has referenced within the last delta units at time t. So at time t, we can go back through the last delta number of page references and whichever pages were referenced within that delta number of units are the members of the current working set. Basically, the working set is the set of pages we've recently referenced and because of the principle of locality, it's assumed that for the immediate future at least, we'll likely keep working with those same pages. Now, 
there's obviously going to be some point at which we have to transition to using a new set of pages. And so this working set strategy by itself is not a perfect way of determining how to manage the resident set. However, it is a good basis from which other more practical strategies are designed. So we'll continue diving into this concept of a working set in more detail with the following example. Here on the left, we have a sequence of page references. So as we go down, we're also advancing the time because at each time step, we're referencing a new page. And each of these columns will contain the results uh, or rather the members of the working set for different values of delta. So we can have a larger set when delta is larger. Although the size of the working set could sometimes be smaller than delta if, for example, we have referenced the same page repeatedly within the last few time steps. So let's go through this bit by bit. Um, initially, our working set is empty. And as we access pages, we'll add them to the set. And so initially, we'll add 10 to all of these for all different sizes of delta. And then we reference the next page. And so we'll still have 10 here because the size of this set is 2, or rather the delta is 2, meaning the maximum possible size is 2. And because all of these delta values are larger, we'll have 10 and then 3 for each of these as well. Now at this point, for delta equals 2, we have to lose a value because we're accessing five and we access three here, we're only storing pages that are within two time steps. So we'll have three and then five, and we lost the 10. That's not true for the rest of these because they're all larger values of delta. So we can still store all three pages that we've referenced so far. And then I'll just, go forward in the twos column here for a while and you can see how things change we have 5 and 18 and then 18 and then 10 then 10 and 5 and then finally something kind of interesting happens here we access 10 and then 5 and then 10 again so at this point the working set is exactly the same as it was on the previous time. Now, know that this is a set, so the order of, this, of the elements doesn't matter, even though I've been writing them in a certain order. So that's why the set is the same here. Uh, it has the same elements, 10 and 5. But next, we access 20, and so it changes again to 10, 20. But then it's the same again because we had 10, 20, 10. So 10 and 20 are still the members of our working set. This is relevant because if we're using the working set as a basis for managing the resident set, then whenever the working set is consistent, that indicates that we don't have any page faults to worry about. Now, as we go along here though, we're going to keep encountering new pages and the working set will not be the same again. So I'll just finish out this column. Now naturally, as Delta gets larger, we can store more elements in our set. And it actually turns out that for larger values of Delta, um, the smaller values will always be a subset of the larger values. So here, these sets are equal, those sets are equal here. 3, 5 is a strict subset of 10, 3, 5. And it's always the case that a column to the left will be a subset of a column to the right of it. So let's add values to this column until something interesting happens. So here we access 5, and we also access it here. And so here is a point where the working set does not change. And then we access 10 which was also already in the set. So we actually have an example of the working set shrinking, going from three elements 
down to just two. So once again, the working set is 510 for a delta of three, because if we look at these last three page references, 10, 5, 10, those are the only elements that we accessed within three steps. Of course, the size grows back up again, and then shrinks again, then back up, and then the contents fluctuate a bit until we get to here, where once again, the working set does not change from the previous step because we have 5, 22, and 20, and 5, 22, and 20 are the last three pages we accessed. And then the last two entries are going to be different from each other. And at this point, we can fill out columns for delta equals 4 and delta B equals 5 using the same procedure. Here is the result. And you'll see that as delta increases, we have more of these dots, meaning that the working set changes less often. Um, and we also have some cases where the size of the working set is actually smaller than delta, which rarely happens for small values of delta. Now, if we wanted to manage the pages for a process based on the working set, one thing we could do is sort of monitor the working set and then use a least recently used uh, page replacement policy to remove pages that are no longer in the working set. So at this point, when the working set is just these three pages, the LRU policy would remove you know, 18 and 20, for example, because they're no longer in the working set. And then we would only allow a process to execute if its whole working set was resident in memory. Unfortunately, managing the resident set isn't quite as easy as that for various reasons. Uh, one is that picking the right value of delta isn't obvious. Um, there's no real clear way to do it. And in any case, it would likely vary depending on the type of the process and the specific requirements anyway. Also, actually computing what the real working set is is impractical. Um, it takes a lot of work uh, to measure everything needed to do it accurately, and that would sort of cancel out the benefits of this approach. And then finally, there's the simple fact that um, past memory references do not perfectly predict future memory references. The principle of locality is a matter of probabilities. However, as the process executes, we actually expect it to move from using one set of pages heavily to using another set of pages heavily. And this can be empirically measured by looking at how the working set size fluctuates over time. So for a typical process, when it starts up, the working set size will grow quickly uh, because we go from having nothing allocated to having several pages in memory. And we eventually reach some sort of like stable period where we're mainly working with the same pages over and over again. But as the code moves forward, um, we'll move to parts of code that are in memory we haven't reached yet. So you know we get past using the same loops over and over again, for example. Or uh, on the data side, we stop using the same variables because certain variables may be relevant early in the program. And as the program progresses, we no longer need them. And we start using other variables instead. And so we enter a transient period. And in this period, the working set size grows because as we move to using a whole new set of pages, we still have a lot of the old pages get left over in the working set uh, before they eventually get flushed out and then things stabilize again. And these sort of transient periods will occur over and over again throughout the lifetime of a typical process. And so we would like to have a way to avoid basing our resident set decisions on how the working set handles these transient periods. Now, I won't be going into the details of how that's done in this video, but the important takeaway here is that the more advanced methods which are actually used to do resident set management with variable allocation and global replacement are 
based on the working set, even though there are fundamental flaws with using this exclusively. So we need to know this concept because real world algorithms sort of are built on top of this and extend this idea.